Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Good to see you. So I'm live here right at the site where there was a juvenile killed. I just have to make sure that you can all hear me very well because I have an external mic now um, in order to improve the, um, you know, improve the audio outside. So just let me know by your comments if you can hear me loud and clear. Anyway, um, I'll just go on explaining. So what we see behind us is one of many lines in North America. They are all overhead and they're called the distribution power line. Okay, so that's the distribution. Hi, we hear you. Oh, thank you, Lady Hawk. Nice to see you. So I'm seeing your comments as they come in. So just keep in your comments. I can see you. GoPro, ah, there's RJ. Jenny's there. Very nice to have Lady Hawk and everybody. Just keep on your, your, your comments coming in. So... Um, before we start and I go down to David Hancock who's, who's waiting down there, let me give you a brief overview of how the distribution network and the, and in, in, in fact, the whole power distribution works in, hi, nice to see you, I can see all your names. The power distribution works in North America. So North America has the biggest grid in the world. It's very different to the European uh, uh, network because, um, first of all, the voltage or the power that you come come typically from from uh, coal power for, uh, stations, from gas stations, from renewable energy, and so on, from hydropower. That's where the power comes in initially. It gets then uh, lifted up to a very high voltage, and those are these these uh, very long lines that you often see uh, over land, right? And these typical lines are way above, and they are about uh, they're a couple of one hundred thousand miles throughout North America. Uh, distributing the the electricity from the generator put on with a transformer to high voltage and typically these go to 200,000 volts and higher right right sometimes on DC right up to three four hundred thousand and so on and 500,000 across uh, across the land in China is much higher by the way and but that is far too dangerous the, um, that is a very efficient way of transporting energy but or electricity what you then have to do is you have to transform it down and that's where we come into what we call behind us the medium voltage grid and that's typically what you see See, that's a medium voltage grid and right and these are distributed in what we call three phases you always see three lines it's the most efficient way of transport transporting electricity across the world what they found out in tesla's edison's time is when they make alternating current that means the current changes its polarity all the time the best way to to transport it in the most efficient way is with three lines called three phases okay and instead of needing six wires you only need three wires it's a balanced system and it works very well and that's something we enjoy throughout north america and what is different to the european network by the way is that the medium voltage network that we see behind me that is typically 38,000 volts and below uh, is mainly overland is mainly overland. That's very different in Europe, where the grid was very well planned and a lot of it is underground, right? So this is also where most of the accidents occur. And this is exactly the, the site where, where we're going to walk now that's right behind me, where David is already waiting. You see at the end there are three transformers. There are three phases. And typically there would be three transformers, one for each phase, right? And the, those are actually the most dangerous places for, for the... Um, uh, you know, for, for typically for raptors, of course, because they have the biggest wingspan. And we're going to have a look at it now. I'm just going to flip the camera one second. Let me flip the camera. Uh, let's see where I can. Oh, the sun is so powerful. I have to just see where it is on the screen. So give me a chance here to flip. Ah, here we go. Okay. So we're going to walk over now. Let me just straighten. Up. Let me just. I've got my mic there. I'm going to straighten this now. There's David Hancock. So what we are looking there. What we're looking there uh, up is one, two, and you can see a third transformer there. And that's at the end because the voltage still up there is, uh, you can see three lines coming in, three phases, and they're typically about 15,000 volts. 15,000 volts is too dangerous. So what they do is they get transformed down and then they, they, you can see the wires coming down and then they go to, to residential areas, or in this case, a farm, right? Now, this is also where the problem is, and we're going to discuss the problem in a moment, but I first want to show you what the cause or the issue of the problem is, and David is already waiting there. This is exactly the site where very nearby a juvenile was found. Hi, David. Hello. This is what we're looking at here is the result of the problem. The problem is up there. 
the result of it is at my feet and it's a lovely newly flying juvenile bald eaglet and if I don't know if you watched me but just as you were starting your conversation just over there on the horizon I saw the nest mate of this bird fly back to its nest in fact from here you can see the nest if you were to zoom in on the tree over here there's still one right. juvenile way it, back there i can't because i've no, only got two hands yeah <laughs> oh my goodness you see you're not <laughs> no. <laughs> so but anyway in that tree is one young and i've been watching the two of them grow for the last three months and the other one uh, this is one of the favorite hunting perches right here of the parent and they have survived many years of living here and hunting from this because as you pointed out this is one of the the terminal poles with all the generators on it in this case it's not transformers, transformers i'm sorry i'm yeah. um, not coming to operate these barns but actually the power is required because of that pump house right here and the big water pumps you see up and down this valley are, are pumped from big ditches here and they need big uh, pumps and big electricity and that's been the the, the failing for for this per bird it, it's landed on those and shorted itself out so this is a, a wonderful bird it's unfortunately blown itself out right here I mean the, the short blew a hole right through the bird and uh, a, a sad end for a bird that probably had been flying two maybe three days that was all it was it's 83rd or 84th day it made its first flight and this was probably the second or the third day of, of practicing flying in the area the other one as i say just flew back to the nest it's still in the region they're just about to migrate but yeah there's a, a terrible smell of burning flesh coming up from this bird i mean it it really gets them very hot but uh, anyway the, the, here is a a typical loss of a juvenile in this case a fledgling bird but it can be subadults it can be adults um, as you know in fact right behind you about three miles is owl the big rehab center where almost all the birds that get into difficulty are taken and rob the manager uh, who looks after all the birds he was uh, quoted recently as saying in in uh, one season they got 47 electrocuted eagles right just that's only here that's only the area uh, that's yeah. just in this little area yeah 47 and that's what he got how many more were not even found is probably much greater than that so electrocution is a is a huge huge challenge throughout the world for big birds particularly eagles who want to sit on these big lookout perches and scan the area exactly it's a perfect perch it's, isn't it's, it? yes. they've created a perfect perch. they yes. cut down all the trees and put in a telephone pole that's electrocutable for them so i mean it's it's just a an unfortunate set of circumstances we create beautiful bald eagle habitat except we take away their natural perches and give them a death trap instead right and I mean, this is, of course, incredibly tragic. Uh, I mean, we know how, how difficult it is for a juvenile to survive. Yeah. And then to be electrocuted is, is really, uh, really tragic. It's, uh, I mean, as you said, this probably was just uh, flying a few days. And this is something that can be seen throughout North America, by the way. And, and that brings us, before we go to, um, yeah. before I explain what, what happened in this case, is the uh, the there is a very strict law in North America actually in, in in the United States? But if I read correctly, the last time it was enforced was in two thousand nine. It may have you know it may have um, uh, been enforced since then, but nobody's enforcing the law, and the penalties are actually are actually very high if you see deliberate uh, de you know deliberate. Um, uh, and, and preventable destruction. Thank you very much, GoPro. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. I really appreciate that. So, so the point, the point is, was this preventable? The answer is absolutely yes. The, the, I'll tell you also what the issue here is. Uh, the, 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 the issue comes from two sides. I'm just gonna, yeah. uh, going to point up at the, the pole there. So what you see is three transformers. Those are three phases coming in. And you can see the three lines, forget the, forget the telephone lines at the bottom, but you can see if you look carefully up, you can see three phases. The phase-to-phase -phase distance is usually, yeah, I can see your 
question, just keep them back a little bit. You know, I'll, I'll let in some questions just as, uh, you know, when I finish explaining. But the face-to-face -face distance is smaller than the wingspan of the eagle. So as David already pointed out, thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. That's really, I appreciate that. Thanks, Kathy. So the problem is uh, when they take off, they could easily, uh, their wingspan stretches right over, right? So they uh, once, uh, if you sit on a single face, you've often seen these birds sitting, nothing happens. That means that you are on floating potential. Nothing happens. But as soon as you touch from the outer phase, one of the outer phase to the middle phase, you get instantly electrocuted at 15,000 volts. And that's not the voltage that kills you, it's the high current. It's the high current that kills you uh, instantly. So uh, what you are basically is a toaster, right? It's a, it's, it's a toaster, you are resistance here. In this case, the, 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 you know, the, the, the blood, of course, which contains a lot of minerals, um, uh, cr uh, creates a very good conductor and, and, and ab absolutely fries the, the, uh, the eagle, unfortunately, I have to explain it that way, you know, with, within a split of a second. That's what happens. So it's the face-to-face -face, uh, that's the problem. But it's even worse right here at the transformer because if you can see, you call these small things jumper wires. From coming out from each um, transformer, there's a wire. I hope you can see that. And they are very close together here. They're not insulated. They could be insulated, but they're not. It's pure cost saving from the utility not to insulate them. And this is where tragedies happen also with smaller birds like ospreys, hawks, uh, you know, kestrels and so on, because they can easily touch uh, two of the phase wires that come out here in the transformer. And that's usually where most of the uh, tra tragic accidents happen because, of course, the eagle has, or, or the raptor in this case, has no idea. And if they insulated the, the, the jumper wires, which is easy to do at the installation, it would not be a problem. And there are many other things you can do. It's just the issue for the utilities is, I mean, there are throughout North America, there are about five, six million uh, uh, miles of distribution lines. And each of these uh, have a pole distance between them about 300 feet. So this pole here has a height of about 40 feet. And the distance to the next pole, typically in the urban areas, is about 300 feet. And in the, uh, sorry, in the rural areas, it's 300 feet. And in the urban areas, it's a lot less. So this is exactly where the issue is. Something can be done, but the law has to be enforced, properly reinforced because the, 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 you know, the deaths that you have with our ever-increasing uh, power consumption is going to ever-increase you know, if we don't take care of our environment. So that was my quick, <laughs> uh, that, that was my quick electrical engineering. Well, David, maybe you want to say a bit more from, from the biology point well, of view. Well, yeah. sure. Um, oh, I, I'll hold yeah, that and speak right into it. Good. <laughs> well, the, the, the real tragedy is it, we, we've actually created some of the best bald eagle habitat in the entire world in this area. It's around human habitation. It's in the suburban urban areas, in the farmlands. And as a result of creating all this good habitat with lots of food, ducks, geese, water, fowl, a um, lot of fish in the ditches, muskrats, bunnies along the ridges, we, and then road kills. Everything else is run over and killed on the roadsides. So we we invite the eagles into the area, but the failing is we don't leave trees for them to effectively sit in and scan their horizon. So what are they left with? They're sitting on our electrified poles. And so it's a disaster waiting to happen. Now, you point out they could have easily corrected this when they actually installed it. But there is a post-construction correction that they can do almost yeah. as easily. They, just like you can um, insulate your water lines in, in and around your house and your pump houses and so on. We do this every winter. There's little snap-on uh, protective areas, uh, covers that you can put on these yes, lines. They could do this. Yes. Sleeves, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They can easily do this. It's mm -hmm. just that they don't want to waste the time and the money. So they wait until they get, I, I think there's a, a number, they let a pole kill so many eagles before they say, oh dear, it's one that we should put some extenders on it and perhaps insulate th these guidelines. So there's solutions, but like lots of solutions, it's cheaper to disregard nature and, and just let it destroy itself as opposed to investing properly in, in saving the wildlife. So it's just, it's a perfect example of, of, of greed.
Yeah, ja Jackie, by the, sorry, I just turned the microphone this way. Jackie is saying they charge us enough, uh, so why can't they do this? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there's, especially in the, in the States, there are some areas where electricity is quite expensive. So, well, it's, it's, it's all a matter of reinforcement. If, if they started doing exactly what David is doing here with a recent tragedy where a nest was illegally brought down, just check the last uh, broadcast, where he's doing incredible work, by the way, of, of, um, of uh, seeing, seeing to it that, that the Wildlife Act or the, is, is reinforced here in British Columbia, that would be a major achievement. That's all it is about. It's not that the laws don't exist, right? So, yeah. Yeah. so um, people can do the same kinds of things as we're trying to do here. And, and I don't want to suggest yeah. that other people aren't. Around the continent, around the world, pe people are locally taking the responsibility of of protecting their areas, recreating habitat for wild birds, and particularly when you, the exciting ones are seeing the predators at the top of the the apex of the food chains. I mean, often you have to have, you have to do a lot of work on getting the smaller species there before you can get the predators, the big ones. Those then you can see, and that's kind of nice. And when we see an eagle, we know that other parts of the habitat have done fairly well in order to support the eagle. But these bigger birds have additional challenges, like they require huge trees to support their nest. They require some perches that aren't electrified. And, and that's up to local people to show they care. That's what it's all about. You have to get out and demand to your local representatives that they insist that this kind of negligence is not allowed. Well, well, absolutely. And uh, I mean, David pointed it out very well. It's, it's because there are fewer and fewer trees for the eagles uh, to, to perch on. So uh, this, is, this is what's going to happen more and more. Actually, the, we, we believe that the uh, numbers are not increasing linearly. They're probably increasing uh, ex uh, exponentially. But let's talk about the high voltage lines too. Right in the back, David, you just hold my microphone. Yep. I'm going to try and zoom in if I can. But as you do, you could walk up because... Oh, whoop, whoop, <laughs> sorry, I, you weren't keeping up with me. <laughs> I was supposed to zoom in. Hang yeah. on. Um, right, it's interesting. Second. The lines that you're going to be looking at way off in the distance also, the, own, the first two that are actually behind the chicken barn, you can't see. One of those mm -hmm. actually has an active bald eagle's nest that it also just fledged young. And another one, which is actually on the horizon here, you can't see the nest from here because it's about almost two miles away, mile and a half. It also had um, a successful, well, it, this year it wasn't successful, to be honest. It, it actually failed. So th there's been several of the nests around here lately, this, this year, that have not done well. They've, they've failed. But the area is incredibly productive. I mean, now you're up here, you can actually see one of the main attractions for the eagles. Mm -hmm. It's this waterway. It has a lot of fish. It has uh, right. muskrats, has lots of ducks and geese, uh, goslings, right, right. Um, and, and so this is a perfect inland pool for the right. eagles for feeding. And so, and this is the only perch to sit in yes. and look at the feeding area. Yeah, so, 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 so let's say something about the high voltage lines. So typically these high voltage lines are, uh, the, the, um, the, the ones that you see back there would be around 150,000 volts and, uh, and higher. Those are typically tr uh, the so-called transmission network. And so the face-to-face -face distance, which we just talked about, is too large, really. It's not a problem for the raptors, neither is the a problem there for them uh, to perch there. The problem is another one, and that is collision, right? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. yeah. flying directly into the wires. It, it, it can be these kinds of wires. It can be the really big, tall, high-tension wires. And it's not just eagles. J just across the valley, there was um, a, a couple of years ago now, maybe three years ago, there was one small field. I mean, it was only like eight or ten acres, but it was planted in something, and I forget what it was right now, that was a great attraction to the migrating trumpeter swans. And one set of lines going down parallel to the highway killed, I think it was 132 trumpeter swans. And most of them just had their wings broken and then, uh, and sometimes they were killed outright, but they went to the ground, coyotes would get them. But I mean, just another natural human created catastrophe. Part of the solution there was not removing the wires because they needed the big lines, was that they changed the crop. So this was another, so they took out this attractive crop that was on the ground growing so that the swans 
somebody didn't want to fly in there and then flying out in the late evening and, and not seeing this because of the, looking into the sun. They just miss seeing these wires. They're, they're pretty big and conspicuous, but so many birds just flew into them. And, and that happens here with eagles if they're being chased by crows or chasing each other. They get flying around all these big high long lines and they just fly into them because they're watching over their shoulder who's attacking them whether it's a crow or another eagle so a lot of them are literally incapacitated broken wing which means they're going to die simply because the wires were intruding into their their habitat right and i i, I think the the, the high voltage uh, line is is more difficult to take care of because mm. uh, what they haven't done properly of course is is environmental studies before they uh, implemented them because they these can be the the the, the paths for birds right for, for flight paths. we, we have so. one of the greatest flyways in all of north america we're, we're on this coastal flyway which has millions upon millions of shorebirds, millions and millions of ducks and geese and cranes, swan, and of course all the predators. Because you've got so many of, of the lower creatures in the food chain, that's why this whole delta area is being proposed as a, as a birds of prey center of the world because we get so many predators here only because we have so many of the food species and that invites the predators and then we stick around we stick up a big pole and either electrocute them or something a wire that they can just fly into and, and so it's a real challenge it's a real challenge yeah i think the challenge of course the 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 the, the questions of couldn't one put these lines underground the answer is of course you can you can put high voltage underground you would uh, would put high voltage in, in in direct current underground however that is really costly. You're talking about uh, several factors here, you know, for, uh, several multiple factors of putting them underground, which, which can be done. But again, you know, who's going to, that's a big question, who's going to carry the costs, right? So the high voltage, uh, the existing ones is, 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 is I, don't, I don't even know uh, what a solution is for the, for the medium voltage that we have there for the transformer that we just saw. There, there's definitely solutions. They're definitely there, and they, they, you know, they they can be implemented. and They should. Once an accident happens, it should be a law that they just they get implemented straight away. So. so I just want to show them. If you can point the camera over my oh, head, yeah. Yeah, there's a very tall there's a very tall tree in Aspen, and next to it, breaking the skyline, is a big cottonwood, and the nest is right middle in the center, and you can see it. And a few minutes ago, I just saw the other juvenile fly right into there, and of course, he's missing his sibling, his sister. That one is the smaller one that's in the nest. It's the male. This is a big female here. So the world is missing one more eagle today. David, how many electrocuted um, eagles have you seen in your life? Oh, well, I've heard of a great deal more than I see. I hear about them and the, I, I simply have either them sent to owl or sent to the, when they're sent to me or I'm told about them or sent to the wild, Fish and Wildlife Service because they look after them. They are the repository, the Fish and Wildlife Branch, because they see that the feathers are given to the native Indians. And so that that's a kind of a, an end result of, of a bird like this. And okay, some, I, while I've got this one, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give you some questions okay. to answer okay. now, David. Oh, dear. So okay. Question, let, let me just go uh, and, and get some questions. Where exactly are we, first of all? Okay. We're in the city of Delta. We're directly south of the city of Vancouver, just a, about five miles north where I'm looking right now is the Fraser River. And on the other side of it, is a little island which is part of the city of Richmond and then another three four miles on the other side of that is the other branch of the the north arm of the Fraser River and north of that is Vancouver City. If I turn around and look south here where I'm pointing just about four miles or three miles from here is Boundary Bay which is this incredible ecological reserve for shorebirds, ducks, geese and so on and the very first in 1998 the very first bird that I encountered on an artificial nesting, eagle nesting on an artificial pole was right there on the edge of Boundary Bay. I mean, we stripped out all the trees around the best eagle habitat in the world. And so what they were left with in this case was a cell tower. And I have shots of them spending the night sitting right side by side of a big 
pounding red light and I gather that that's another kind of like electrocution but slowly because now they're really worried they're really worried about well, I'm not sure what you're pointing. I want to, I've got no more questions for you. Oh, okay. Okay. okay more, so. more, more questions. They are, they are, they are asking. First of all, are the laws in Canada the same as in the United States? Is this very illegal? And also, of course, are the casualties in the states much more in Canada? Maybe you can say something to that. From Patty and so okay. On. The laws in the countries ultimately are similar in the sense that the eagle is protected. In Canada, well, in, yes, in Canada the protection of the eagle is a provincial um, laws. So in British Columbia, they're slightly different than they are in Alberta or Saskatchewan, Ontario. Then on the United States side of the border, which is like six miles from here, uh, the laws are all come under the U.S. Federal Fish and Wildlife Service. And they're kind of uniform across the states, but still, states can do other things uh, uh, statewide about what the controls are in terms of building these poles and whether they leave the the wires uninsulated and so on those sometimes become more local laws killing an eagle is a federal offense in the united states it's a provincial offense in canada so there's some slight but the all cases the eagle is definitely the, one of the most protected species on the continent yeah, just give some more questions. We're there now, so whatever questions you may have, just let them pour in because we don't have much lag on a live. It's very good, so I can see your questions. So just yeah, we're in. sitting near a cell tower, <laughs> <laughs> which probably frequently has eagles sitting on it, getting pulses, whether they're electrically intensified enough to kill somebody or just the, the more subtle ones. That's By the way, that's what a mic that they, uh, David's holding. It's a, it's a. Uh, we made it into a directional mic. It's, it's very efficient out here. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Good. Okay. That's... So this is Delta. You asked where we were. Yeah. In this city, I have seventy-nine active pairs of eagles nesting. The city I live in is on that hill right there. That's called Surrey. It's only four miles from here, three miles from here. In fact, maybe only two miles from here is the city of Surrey where those big conifer trees are. And I got another 43 pairs of eagles nesting in Surrey. And the one, the city south of us is Richmond. I forgot to add them up, but I think there's about 25 in Richmond. It's not a very big city. And Vancouver, the metropolitan area of Vancouver has 19 pairs of eagles nesting in and among the houses and local golf courses and city parks and where people have one big tree left overlooking the water. There you will find an eagle. They, we have such productive areas. They're just desperate to find big enough trees on which to hang those great nests. It was very nice. By the way, I can see a Patty here. Karen's also there. Karen Bills, I've just seen. So oh, I just say hi, hi. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> we have all, everyone here. It's very nice to have you all. Very nice. So if you have any other questions, so well, uh, again, to summarize, so the very high voltage lines that you saw, um, uh, the, 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 the tragic, um, um, uh, what, what, what the threat for the eagles there is really, I'm just going to spin, um, uh, turn there. That's the high, that was. Oh, that's the high ones. Yeah. Those are the high voltage direction. lines. Yeah. That's the collision. Mainly waterfowl, you've heard that. Um, uh, uh, you know, collision fat fatal uh, uh, um, yeah, um, fatalities. Fatalities. Yeah. Fatalities, thank you. But it can also be little songbirds flying into these wires at night. I and mean, it's not necessarily just big birds. Small finches and robins and everything else. Uh, flies into these lines in the dark right. in their night migration and maybe you can once more we just got the question what can we do that's a good one so here that's most important. well you can insist that your local in this case about electrocution you can insist that your local power company insulates the poles on poles like this they should put an extension up as they've done many places in Delta. They put an extender up about six feet and then put a crossbar that the eagles can stand on. That's that it. gets them just a little bit above uh, these really dangerous lines. Just putting an extender, and it's not a really a very big cost to them, but it takes effort. And you have that, so to answer your question, the local people need to go to their local um, hydro company and insist that they protect their birds. Yeah, otherwise they'll go to some other company and so on. That's, that's, you have to put pressure on them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and there, there are a few other things that you can do, actually. Um, mm. uh, what David just pointed out, especially here where the three-phase transformers come out. I'm just going to hold it still one second. I'm going to try and hold it as still as I can. So there we go. You can see the three phases and you can see the middle. Can you see the middle transformer? If you look at the middle transformer, there's a wire coming out to the right and it comes very close to the right transformer. That's exactly very dangerous. Uh, my estimate is that the distance between the, what, what, you, uh, uh, what you call the clearance, the clearance distance there is very small. It's, prob it's probably the wingspan of, of, a, of, a, of a very small um, songbird, right? So even a songbird could get electrocuted between these two uh, transformers. And of course, an eagle just, um, you know, paying attention to the wires, especially a juvenile, uh, would, would, would be electrocuted instantly. So the, the, the solution here is to put a sleeve over, an insulating sleeve of at least the middle phase to prevent that. If they, want, if they, get, if they, get, if they sit on one phase, it's not a problem. But the problem is the face-to-face uh, and also if when they take off, especially near the poles, what you should do is put a sleeve over the middle one. If you put a sleeve over the middle phase, then you prevent uh, electrocution from the middle phase to the right and the middle phase to the left. So these are things that can also be done. And there are a few other interesting things um, that can be done. Some have put some small wind, uh, so, sort of a small rotating uh, fan there with mirrors that, that sort of um, uh, you know, obviously, uh, the raptors don't like that, and they get distracted by that. So, and not to sit there, and so on. Right? And, and right. they also put um, balloons and colored tapes and flashers right along those lines, so that birds see them before they fly into them. I mean, that's another uh, preventative thing for even for the night flying birds, but also for the daytime. It just gives that little bit extra edge for something that's flying along. Right. Something, so, yeah. Well, uh, yes. So, do you want to say anything else, <laughs> David? <laughs> no. Um, uh, we. we it, it's interesting. We are having the IOC, the International Ornithological Congress meetings here for six days next, the end of next, starting the end of next week. That's the biggest gathering of scientists bird scientists in the world and so we're kind of welcoming them and so if any of them are actually listening we look forward to seeing you when you get to the Vancouver area. It's a funny twist in fate but just about the time it starts on the 19th that's about the last day we're going to see any of our local eagles. They'll have all gone north to Alaska. About half of them have gone already the other half will leave just before the IOC gathering. So here we have this huge gathering of, of biologists, bird biologists, and my favorite bird, the bald eagle, isn't going to get, be here, but that's just the way it goes. <laughs> well, David, do you want to say one more thing about the juvenile there? Yeah. The male or female, should we just walk well, there? And sure, then, yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. Well, this is a young female, I mean, young. It was, probably flew on a 83rd to 84th day uh, from hatching, and I think it was on the third day that it was killed after it started to fly. So it had a pretty short life, a pretty short life. I mean, it's a, it's a definite tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Big feet. Huge feet on these females. Big, big feet. Big feet. Yeah, sometimes one sees the change of color on the feet, right? Well, they will be. They will go yeah, yellow, yeah, of yeah, course, we'll but they yellow. don't do that yeah. until later on in the year when they. No, yeah, I that, mean that's that they a, get fried. So sometimes. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's what I mean. This one blew out a hole right this through blew here. Blew out the hole, so you can see. Yeah, there's a hole right in the breast of the bird, so it shorted, I guess, from the feet and blew yes, blew exactly, right out. Exactly, exactly. So it's very possible that that touch, that's where the one uh, touched, and that's where the other one touched and, and and that's that's unfortunate what what happened yes. yeah yes. yeah it's a right. a disaster we, we'll hope that it's sibling the the male chick yeah, that was in the nest it, right? we, we just we, saw we, i just saw it fly into its yeah. nest again we'll hope it has a a longer life i mean we hope that it, five years from now we'll come back to this region and and breed i mean that's why we've been banding all these birds and putting trackers on them is, is to see where they're going when they leave here and hopefully we'll be able to track them right through their five, six years until they mature. But you know what one could already do is make, uh, make the, uh, write a letter to the electricity company and tell them, look, what's just happened here? Isn't there something you should do? I mean, this is, uh, well, OWL, hmm. the big well, rehab cool. center, regularly works with the city or with the BC Hydro in this hmm. case. And they, when they find a pole that's had a, a killing or two, then they get 
BC Hydro to come and put an extender on it. They might even put insulation wraps around around those uh, uh, sidelines there. But basically, they put an extender up above to get the birds perching away from uh, the hot lines. Yeah. So well, we. There's a bit of a lesson about one of the ta tragedies. The camera here, yeah. and uh, so yeah. from, from David and, and myself, I'm yeah. going to say goodbye. Okay, thank you for participating, everyone. Yeah. And yeah, and, and I, I hope that it was helpful. Please pass the broadcast on to others. Um, I, I hope it was educational and uh, that it was uh, clear what I can do at some other stage is just put in some, uh, you know, from home, puts in some diagrams and show you exactly more what, what happens and what can be done. Right, so... I, well, thank you, Mama, thank you on behalf of the <laughs> Eagles, Christian. <laughs> yes, yes, and thank you, thank you. I can see your Patty, Osprey, Mama, and everybody else who's just sending him all the messages. Thank you so much from both of us. And uh, well, have a, have a, an event for. And uh, there's Mark. There's ah, uh, there's Lady Hawk. Lady Hawk. Oh, also yeah. there. Oh, that's Wonderful. what I need. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. <laughs> Lady Hawk. Oh my goodness. Okay, here comes our data. Oh dear. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, um, let's excuse this. I'm going to shut this oh. off because, because we say something that shouldn't be said. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, bye, bye bye. Thanks for participating. I'm going bye to see bye. where where I can uh, end this now. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.